whether you and Mr. Kramer had any discussion about James Damiano in this uh, at lunch. No, just uh, I don't really know Jim, Jim about the studio. Nothing. And, and did you he discuss anything about any of the claims or facts or issues involved in this case, as, as you understand them? No, not that we already know about or talked about. Well, what did you talk about with Mr. Kramer at lunch concerning this case? Concerning this case? There wasn't much talked about. Was anything I talked about? I met Jim at, in the studio, and I basically, we talked that I really have no involvement to this. There's nothing really concrete that I have that's going to be, uh, you know, as we talked at my house, too, the same thing. I mean, I, I still to this day wonder why I'm here, because I met Jim Damiano twice in the studio, it shows up my store, and here I am. You know, I don't even recall his music. I never hung out with him personally. Um, but the only thing that I know is about those, this thing with Tony Tiller, which I don't know if he got him tickets or not, or if he met Dylan, or I have no first-hand knowledge of that. You do have first-hand knowledge, though, sir, as you testified, do you not, that Mr. Tiller told you that he didn't even know who to contact or who to talk to if he wanted to set up a meeting with right. Bob Dylan and but that's Jim Damiano. But that doesn't... How that fits in, I don't really understand, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't see his statement saying to me, Jim wanted him to get tickets, and Tony saying, well, who does he think I am that I can do that? Well, you're aware, sir, are you not, that... Uh, At that time, I knew nothing of Tony's Tiller position. At Sony Records, I knew nothing of his background. I didn't know who he knew at Sony Records. There's no knowledge of that at all. So you're here today because Mr. Damiano has designated you as a witness right. with knowledge. Right, right. And I'm still trying to figure out why. And, and I, my conversation with Jim the whole time, too, has been the same. I don't understand. Well, is it fair to say that you're a little annoyed about being uh, involved in this whole thing? Um, it's an inconvenience. And, uh, annoyed? Um, I wouldn't say I'm annoyed. Um, like I just stated, I really don't understand what significant role I have in this. Okay, well, let's go on and uh, we'll ask a few more questions. And then okay. Hopefully we can end, end the inconvenience for you. Uh, you said you, you met Mikey Harris uh, through her son, Duke. No, I met Mikey Harris first at Tony Tiller's house at a party. That's when I met Mikey Harris. And at the time you met... Like I just stated, I really don't understand what significant role I have in this. Okay, well let's go on and uh, we'll ask a few more questions. And then okay. Hopefully we can end, end the inconvenience for you. Uh, you said you, you met Mikey Harris uh, through her son, Duke. No, I met Mikey Harris first at Tony Tiller's house at a party. That's when I met Mikey Harris. And at the time you met her, did you talk about James Damiano's music? No. Did you talk about Bob Dylan? No. Did no, we talked about Irene Conrad and the House of Music and different people that we knew. So Mr. Damiano's claims and music uh, were simply not discussed when you met Mike Harris? No. I didn't even know Jim knew. And what's been previously marked as Defendant's Exhibit 6, and that's a copy of 11 years, and ask you whether that appears to be the document that Mr. Damiano gave you when you met with him in 1994. Yeah, it looks like it. I don't think it was as thick, though. It's about that thick. So perhaps it was a work in progress when he gave it to you. Yeah, it was part, part, 